What is the best artificial diet for honeybees? Spoiler alert! Beekeeper's recipe might be the best available out there, hands down. Welcome to InsideTheHive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. I'm your host, Dr. Bee. In nature, honeybees get their nutrition mainly from flowers. They get nectar for energy source, carbohydrates, and they use pollen as their protein source. Depending on the region and the time of the year, honeybees might not have enough in nature for, for them to survive. If they don't have their nutrition, they succumb and then die. That's why along evolution, honeybees evolved to accumulate reserves, honey and pollen. However, modern beekeeping have a tendency to take those natural uh, reserves from honeybees and in those times when they don't have anything in the surroundings the beekeepers tend to give them some supplementation something that is cheaper and I would say with less nutritional value and in today's world we have several commercially available uh, diets out there that people can go to the internet and buy a bunch of them and give them their bees. But the question, the question that everybody wants to know is, which one is better? Which one is the best? And which one is the worst? This video is brought to you by our fans on Patreon. If you like content like this, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you. Dr. Vincent Risigliano from the USDA Research Laboratory in Baton Rouge, together in a collaboration with Randy Oliver from scientificbeekeeping.com, released last week a very important study comparing these different dyes, and they measured many different things to really answer the question, which one is best, which one is the worst, which one do what? Randy Oliver's apiary in Grass Valley is a very good location to perform such kind of studies because Randy, as a local beekeeper there, he knows when there is a shortage of nutrition. And that's important because if you perform that kind of study in a, in a place where there is other food around, natural sources, that can mess up with the experiment because the bees might be consuming something from outside and not really consuming the, the patties, the artificial patties, the supplementation, and that might mess up with the results. A total of 144 hives was split in 8 feeding groups where they're gonna feed with different protein supplementations and also they were spread in, in 3 different sites. And the feeding groups received the following commercial available honeybee diets in the market. Global Patties, Ultra Bee, Book Soft, Mega Bee, AP23, Healthy Bees, Home Brew, which is a homemade recipe from beekeepers, and a control diet with sugar only, no protein at all. The experiment started in the middle of August and go all over February, which is a critical moment for beekeepers to prepare the bees for almond pollination. This figure shows when they start, uh, how many times the, the bees were fed, and, and the times they collect samples for analysis. The researchers evaluate the population size, average bee weight, nutrition-related gene expression, gut microbiome, and pathogen levels. And boy, what a difference! The first difference they found was the consumption of these diets. Which one the bees prefer better? From August to November, apparently there was no difference. The bees were consuming all of these diets in a similar levels. However, from December to February, which is a critical moment to build up to prepare the bees for almond pollination, there was a significant difference in the intake of those supplementation by the bees. So which one the bees prefer? So global patties and the recipe from the beekeepers, homebrew, was the preferred one. Those are the ones that the bees consume a lot in that period of time where they found the differences. Followed by Bulk Soft, Mega Bee, AP23, Uta Bee, and in last place, Healthy Bee Patties, which was lower consumption than the negative control themselves that have no protein at all. Something that strikes me here that Ultra B also didn't perform well and in previous studies from Randy Oliver himself in similar conditions in a similar location showed in the past that Ultra B was the best. 
And of course, the consumption of these protein patties uh, translated in the size of the population, as you can see in this figure right here. Global and home-brewed diets produce the largest colony with an average of 7 and 8 frames of bees respectively at the end of the experiment in February. Healthy bees and sugar-controlled diets produce the smallest colonies, averaging 2 and 3 frames of adult honeybees respectively. What are the differences in those diets that could explain such thing? When the researchers look at the total amount of proteins in those diets, nothing really stands out. Take a look. The two diets with the best performance show huge difference in the total amount of protein in those diets. Kind of making us to think, because studies from the past tell us that 20 to 30 percent protein, uh, total protein in a diet is the way to go for optimal performance of honeybee hives. However, in this study, that's not following the same rule. For example, homebrew diets, the one with the best performance, had around 20% protein and global patties have around 16%. So there is a discrepancy here and we might need to revise the old studies because it's not fitting with this study that was very well performed. But what about fat? What about lipids? When the researchers look at the lipid levels, I think there is one lesson that we can learn here. Look at this graph. Apparently the two protein patties that performed better was less than 1% fat compared with the other patties out there. So what about fiber? So as you can see in this figure right here, fiber didn't tell us too much. There is no much difference between the diets. But very interestingly, apparently the total amount of sugar might give us a clue to explain why healthy bee patties uh, didn't perform so well. Healthy bee patties were the only one that reached 60% of sugar content. That's a lot of sugar in that protein patty. And from the 60%, 40% is glucose. Perhaps when the bees are looking for protein sources, they don't want uh, much sugar involved. A lot more studies need to be done to confirm those things. I'm just reading the graphics right here. But what about the ratios? Uh, we know from, from studies in laboratory conditions that uh, apparently a high protein lipid ratio is bad for honeybees and a low protein lipid ratio was better for honeybees in laboratory conditions. So apparently there is a messed up with the physiology when you have too much protein and low amount of lipid. However, in this study, what happened was the opposite because the two proteins, the two diets that performed better are the ones that had the highest protein lipid ratio, which is quite interesting. And again, I know we talked about this before in, in this channel that we need to be very careful when we perform, when try to translate information from laboratory conditions to the field conditions there is a whole a new a completely new ball game when you deal with the cup with a couple bees or when you deal with the whole colony with all the bees interacting with each other and the social organism working uh, in their best but things get much more interesting when the researchers start to look other things for example they look the size of the bees they also look uh, in, in, in nutrition related gene expression and they also look in the, in the gut microbiome. But all of these things I cannot talk right now because I have an appointment. But I will cover all of this. It's going to have a continuation of this video next week. So we can just mention, just go over this um, results. And also I'm going to conclude the whole thing uh, and give my take on that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us on Patreon. I also want to invite you to watch this next video right here. Thanks for watching Inside the Hive.tv, the show about beasts. See you guys next week.